Now I talk a lot about motivation, where to find it, how to find it, but I got a really great question from one of you recently. What to do when you actually have it? So in this video I am talking about how to take full advantage when you do get that burst of motivation, the times you should be ignoring it, and whether or not you should pull an all-nighter for it. Let's go! Hi guys, it's Laura from How To Get Your Shit Together and I help you get organized, get motivated, and then maximize that motivation. So we all know what it's like to get a random burst of motivation. We watch an inspirational video or we listen to a certain song, maybe we talk to an inspirational person or just give ourselves a stern talking to and all of a sudden we are fired up to get shit done. The problem is we don't always know how to take full advantage of it. We don't always know what to do to capitalize on the moment. We know it's not gonna last forever, so we need to be sure that we are riding that motivation train all the way down the track. These are my top tips for seizing that moment and squeezing every last drop out of it. One, be prepared. There is no point waking up one morning, realizing that you are ready to take on the world, and then having no idea what to do with yourself. And while you are busy trying to figure it out, your motivation sneaks off to snuggle up with someone else. Now, if you are like me, you probably have, or you should have, a list of things that you want to do. Things that you would love to do, but you never seem to find the time to do them. Things that need to get done soon-ish, but they always seem to get put on the back burner. Really big goals that require a lot of focused time and effort that you just never seem to have. Well, today is that day. Something I talk about a lot is knowing what the next action is. Always know what the next step is for your big projects and goals. Always know what general direction you're going with it so that when the time comes, you don't have to spend time thinking about it. That is a complete waste of time and trying to figure something out means that you will potentially miss the moment. Instead, you should know exactly what you want to focus on and exactly what needs to be done next to move the project forward. Two, figure out what type of motivation it is. There are different types of motivation. You will be motivated to do different things at different times. Sometimes I am motivated to write. Other times I'm motivated to clean, although admittedly not very often. And sometimes I am motivated just to learn everything I possibly can about some random new topic. So, are you motivated to do something creative or is it more something practical? It's important to figure out which it is because you can waste so much time trying to turn it into something that it isn't. Trying to focus on one thing when really your brain wants to be doing something entirely different. Three, decide if it's worth it. You should have a fair idea of what your priorities are, what is urgent and what is important to you. If not, get on that right away. Once you figure out what you are motivated to do, see if it aligns with your priorities. If it doesn't, try to incorporate it in some way. So let me give you a quick example. Like I mentioned, sometimes I am motivated to research a certain topic, to find out everything I can about it, but it might just be a random topic that I have happened across. And while I do definitely believe that it is really important and vital to me and my well-being, my mental health to expand my horizons and to learn new things, I shouldn't do it at the expense of things that are more important to me, like, for example, family time. So if all three of us are together and I am suddenly motivated to lock myself away and to learn everything I can about some random unimportant topic, I am going to resist that. But I could try to incorporate it in some way into the family time. So maybe I will talk about it to Scout or we could read some books about it or some articles or I could put on YouTube videos about it or a documentary. Or if it's a topic that is unsuitable for a four-year-old, I could still try and capitalize on my motivation to learn by going and learning about something else. 
So try to recognize the difference between genuine motivation and a momentary obsession with something totally unimportant. It is still a great time to get stuff done. Just try to align it with your priorities. Four, cancel everything. So if it is worth pursuing and it is in line with something that's actually important to you, then make space for it. We all know that motivation doesn't stick around for long. Now obviously there are going to be some things that you can't get out of, but if at all possible, move things around so that you can get as clear a run at it as you can. Five, call in backup. Call up the babysitter, draft in friends or family or colleagues, ask a parent friend or a grandparent to collect the kids from school and maybe bring them to the park. Whatever responsibilities you normally have, see if you can get rid of them for a while. Delegation is your best friend. Six, rearrange your entire routine. Now is not the time to be stubbornly sticking to your daily habits. Never break a streak of inspiration by doing something as mundane as taking a quick shower or dusting the cabinets or cooking dinner. I don't care if it's Taco Tuesday, stick a pizza in the oven and get over it. Seven, gather supplies. Whatever task you are taking on, gather everything you will need for it. If you'll be cleaning, make sure that you have all of your cleaning supplies on hand. If you are going to be writing, make sure you have plenty of paper and spare pens or that your laptop or your computer are booted up and ready to go. And don't forget the chargers. The last thing that you want is to be on the cusp of something incredible and then the screen goes blank. Having to stop what you're doing just as you're getting into a good flow to go fetch something potentially disastrous. So minimize the chances of it happening by gathering everything you need beforehand. And speaking of supplies, eight, keep yourself fed and watered. As soon as you feel that you are about to hit a motivation high, get yourself loads of water, plenty of snacks, order a takeaway if you have to, and then bunker down. You don't want to have to stop to go foraging for food, but equally, you don't want to have to stop because you are dying of starvation or dehydration. Have everything you need on hand to keep yourself alert and energized. And try to stick to healthier snacks. There is no point packing yourself full of sugar and then completely crashing and burning after an hour. Nine, close the door. Eliminate as many distractions as possible. Switch off your phone, or at least put it on silent. Turn off notifications. Close down your email and your social media tabs. Hang a big old do not disturb sign and close and lock the door behind you. Tell people you are not to be disturbed. 10, forgo sleep. Now, this is a tricky one and you are going to have to use your best judgment on it. Please do not pull an all-nighter and then try and get in a car and drive somewhere the following morning or operate heavy machinery or do anything that would endanger yourself or the people around you. Come on now, you know better than that. But if you are going to be sharing a ride or you're going to be getting a taxi or taking public transport or you don't really need to be anywhere and you've no real need to get up and out early the next morning, you jammy fecker. Or you can organize for someone else to take the kids to school. Don't disembark the motivation train. So many times I have thought to myself, I'll just go to bed at the normal time because I don't want to disrupt my sleep schedule and I don't want to be a zombie the next day. So I'll just go to bed at my normal time. I'm, you know, I'm in the swing of things now, so I'm sure I'll be able to pick things up where I left off tomorrow morning. Motivation doesn't hang around for you to get a good night's sleep. One late night is not going to derail your entire week. Yes, you are going to have to catch up on sleep the following night, or if possible, by taking a quick cat nap during the day, but that is for after you have plowed through a shit ton of work. Now, like I said, this one is a judgment call. You will know yourself at what point you need to call it a night. 
when no matter how hard you try or how motivated you are, you just cannot focus anymore and you cannot keep your eyes open. But don't turn in just because it's 10 o'clock and that's the time you normally go to bed. Rookie mistake. And finally, 11, take breaks. So it might sound completely counterintuitive to everything I have just said, but you will still need to take regular breaks if you don't want to completely burn out. You want to maximize your motivation, not let it run you into the ground. Keep your breaks short but efficient. So maybe stare off into space for a while, into the distance to give your eyes a bit of a break. Use the bathroom. Do a few jumping jacks, get the blood pumping again. Stretch. Post-motivation you is going to be a mere shell of a human being for a while. So do what you can now to ease their suffering. What do you do when motivation strikes? Do you drop everything and pull an all-nighter? Or do you try to ration it? Let me know in the comments below. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for weekly doses of motivation. And now you will know exactly what to do with it. Until next time, Kura Mila Mahagwev. Okay, Svegi Meshiv Shikalua. Sloan.